I'd like to call this meeting to order. If you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Members present this evening are myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members Gearbaugh, Simon Koenig, Roth, Tahar, and Dillon. Council Member Rhodes, or Mayor Pro Tem Rhodes, excuse me, will be absent this evening. From City Staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, City Treasurer Bennett, I don't believe is here this evening. Um, Police Chief Rennick is in the audience, along with Parks and Rec Director Scruggs and City Engineer Rubel. At this time, the Chair would seek a motion to approve the agenda as submitted unless there are amendments. So moved. As submitted, Mr. Giver. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. All those in favor of approving the agenda as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. This time, the chair would seek a motion to excuse the absence of Mayor Pro Tem David Rhodes. So moved. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded, seconded by Councilwoman Seibo Koenig. I'll get you on the next one, Mr. Roth. All those in favor of excusing the absence, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. I have it. The motion carries unanimously. We have one present this presentation this evening, which is um, a little bittersweet. Um, it is Sandy Wood's retirement, and I would invite uh, Sandy forward at this time. Is this on? You know, it's customary that you give a speech. No. no? <laughs> All right. Well, um, as, uh, as many of you know, um, one of our dispatchers, Sandy Wood, is uh, retiring on August the 21st, mm -hmm. which of course is, uh, is later this week. And Sandy has been with us since 2002. I'm not, actually, let me preface, I'm not gonna read this letter of recognition, but the, the clerk's office did up something very nice for you. Um, I, wanna, I wanna speak candidly here. Um, you've been with us since 2002. Um, and actually, many people don't know this. Sandy worked for Ann Arbor Dispatch many, many moons ago. Right. Um, left Ann Arbor Dispatch and was a small business owner, mm -hmm. and then retired from your small business and came to work for us in 2002. Um, and many people have interacted with Sandy during her tenure. Um, and I was actually thinking about this um, this afternoon, that those on the front lines in city government, with DPW, in the treasurer's office, in the PD, um, often interact with people, um, sometimes the circumstances are pretty difficult, aren't they? Uh, and people are, are troubled and under great distress sometimes, and that's, that's not hyperbole. Um, and it takes a special kind of person to treat them with the dignity that they deserve, to treat them kindly, and to be a professional and to follow up on their concerns and their questions. And Sandy is really a incredibly gifted public servant and I can't think of a better personality type to be at that front desk, generally Monday through Fridays, um, nine to five, when most of the people come in with, with questions and concerns. She does a fabulous job. She's won the respect of her colleagues in city government, the respect of members of this community, um, and she will be greatly missed. Is this a grandbaby right uh -huh. here? Okay. We've got some, why don't you introduce, you've got some family with you. I know, I recognize John and at least one daughter. Where's the daughter that worked at Barry's Bagel? That's that one, okay. I was just there for lunch today. We talk about that a lot. So we got John, your husband. That's Missy. Missy. This is Ashley. Okay. This is my son, Josh. Okay. This is my wife, Ashley, and my grandson, Jackson. And okay. this is my sister, Diane. Wonderful. Did, and you introduced John? Did you skip over him? Oh, you said John. Oh, okay. So you, <laughs> you didn't feel the need to. Okay. And you are going to be spending time, more time with your family in retirement. I am. This is, how many grandbabies we have? This is the newest, correct? Yes, I have okay. three in Florida. He's like the number three, and then there's, the, there's a little girl in Florida that's born just after him. Okay. Yeah, he likes me. Look at oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll make this very brief. Uh, again, we are greatly um, indebted to Sandy because of her service to the city of Celine. She has made Celine and the Celine PD um, better because of her service. Your family, your husband, your children, your grandchildren especially are very lucky to have you and are lucky to have an opportunity to spend more time with you. We don't want you to be a stranger, um, but we wish you the very best of luck in your future endeavors. And I think we all owe her a round of applause.
thank you all for being here. We appreciate it very much. Moving on on the agenda, we come to citizen comments on agenda items. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Uh, anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Donovan, you good there, man? Okay. The floor is yours. My name is Donovan Gillo, and I've been working on a project to raise money for Brecken Park to get a new play structure. I've been to Firehouse Friday. I've done other fundraisers. And um, this is a few other things I did. Do you guys want to? Sure, you can bring that up here. We'll pass it along. Thank you. Um, I'm here to support the for a CARES grant to get money. Very good. Excellent. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate your leadership on this issue very much. Thanks for bringing your folks, too. Are there any other citizen comments on agenda items? No, then we move on to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Is there a motion? Move to approve as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Haar. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by council member Roth. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We have only one unfinished business item this evening. It's 15-131. This is proposed merchant park improvements. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the August 14th, 2015 memo from City Manager Campbell and to approve or not to approve merchant park improvements as presented. Move to acknowledge receipt at this time. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Gearbaugh to acknowledge receipt of the August 14th memo. Is I, there a second? I second. Second. Seconded by Council Member Roth. Uh, Mr. Campo, do you want to go over your memo? Of course, we did have a, a, a work meeting on this topic um, earlier this evening, um, but I suspect we'll have some additional comments, questions, and, and a pretty robust discussion. So, Mr. Campo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you stated, um, we did have a work session. This was at the, a couple uh, city council meetings ago. Um, Paul Reinhold, who's architect uh, from uh, URS, that's uh, contracted with the city to come up with uh, some designs. Um, at the last, me at a couple meetings ago, he, he presented um, pro uh, preliminary proposals and was uh, asked to go back and, and um, relook at it and see if we could find some cost savings and that, those types of things, which, which he has. Uh, he met with our, our work group, our design work group that consists of city staff, um, a couple council members, city council members, and uh, Main Street um, representatives. And uh, the costs were paired back. Um, uh, right now, uh, with a 12% contingency, we're looking at a um, cost estimate of $113,835. Uh, that would be for um, making some improvements in the uh, Merchant Park area, as well as to relocate the current uh, um, dumpster corral and in, in, uh, also grease trap corral uh, that's currently located in, in uh, parking lot one and that would be relocated to the east side at uh, Hall Street. Um, so, um, have any questions for myself, or as I said, uh, Paul Reinhold is here as well, and, and certainly could uh, be happy to do our best to answer any questions. Very good. Paul, do you care make any comment at this time? You were pretty eloquent and, and thorough at the work meeting. but I, I appreciate that. Um, I really don't have anything to All add. Right. Why don't you hang tight then in case there are questions or issues that you can address. Um, Mr. Gearbaugh, is the mover of this motion, do you have any comments or questions at this time, sir? Yeah, from my perspective, I mean, I know we've talked about the cost and everything in this, and I think we're finally, we're basically there, with the only concern that I have is that potentially putting another parking space in the one location near the parking lot where there's that green area. Sure. I just don't know what, um, why we couldn't do that, and if we could potentially do that, I think this would help immensely with the idea that we're providing not only another parking space, but addressing the problem of switching um, handicap from one location to the other. Okay. Um, the other question I had, I, I know this doesn't have all the details in it, but when we talk about drainage, will there be 
how will drainage work on this? Are there going to be um, catch basins? Or? There will have, I will have to uh, include a catch basin okay. uh, that will drain the, er the area po potentially too, depending on how the grading works out. Okay. I just wondered that from my perspective of this. Sure. Thank you. Very good. Any other comments or questions? Um, let's start at the end and we'll just work our way back. Ms. Dillon? What is the proposed time frame for the relocation of the electric panels, the, the streetscape projects? Are those, do we have any time frame as to when they'll be done during the streetscape project? Can we pick and choose or are we uh, at, you know, the mercy of others? They'll wait to cut all the power to the existing lights as late in the process as possible. Construction starts in the spring, so it'll be sometime next summer when, when the panel would be removed. I don't have a specific date. Okay. Anything further, Ms. Dillon? No, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Mr. Roth, did you have any comments or questions, sir? Yes, I do. I want to, first of all, thank the committee for going back and seeing how they can pare back on the prices of it. But I also have several concerns that it was brought up as far as the safety concern with the back in Merchant Park and in the work session is my understanding that that has been temporarily fixed and I think it's, I'm glad it is such and like to keep it safe area at all points in time. I brought up a suggestion making this possibly two different projects, relocation of the dumpster in the Merchant Park for its, itself and that might be better understanding for our taxpayers. I still think it's a large sum of money to spend on a piece of property that we don't own and we're just leasing it for a dollar a year. Also had the concerns about a lot of engineering as far as if it's gonna be, since we're gonna relocate the irrigation system and that stuff for the planters along Main Street and it comes from the back back there, how is the piping and stuff really gonna be relocated. Lots of concerns that I have before this construction project would go forth forward that I'd like to see that be done so it can be incorporated in design and we can do it right the first time instead of having to tear things up. So I think even though it's been on the boards for discussion for some time that there's lots of unanswered questions that wasn't presented to the designer and stuff with it that I like to see situations resolved before we move forward. So when it comes time to vote for this, I definitely vote against moving forward with this project. Thank you, Mr. Roth. Mr. Hart, did you have a comment or um, question, ma'am? Yes, I have. Well, first of all, a question to get back to the to the drainage question. How I'm assuming that all of the buildings surrounding this <coughs> piece of property drain onto the that there's runoff from all of the buildings surrounding this area, and and but. However, that whatever the answer to that is, I'd also like to know um, how is the drainage currently handled? Uh, right now, it, it's uh, piped to the surface and it all runs on the surface into an existing catch basin. At one time, the roof drains did go under, underground, but at some point along the way, they were cut off and, and basically outletted onto the pavement area. And there is one uh, downspout that I'm aware of on the northeast corner of the Oxygen Plus uh, building that uh, outlets into the uh, planting area right now that would have to be picked up. Okay, so um, I, I assume that a redo of the drainage would greatly improve the current drainage situation in this space? Yes, it would. Okay. Um, that's all at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Ms. Seibel Koenig, did you have anything? Um, you know, my question was uh, about the drainage also, and I had I thought I had learned that uh, there was drainage from oxygen plus contributing into that um, planting bed. Um, are they participating in this project at all? I don't know, uh, Mr. Campbell. No, that thus far there is no plans for that. Anything further? No, thank you. No, Mr. Gearbox, please. Um, just a clarification. I know we were talking about the irrigation and electric. Um, would that end up likely being abandoned if we find a new location? Because the question comes up of if we're to having to redo this at Streetscape. It would be removed completely. Mm -hmm. but that's my thing. Then we would end up tearing up that parking lot. 
that point to? Um, well, the the conduit in place would probably stay in place underneath the um, parking area, uh, cut and capped. Okay. Uh, fortunately, I'm involved with the streetscape project also, so uh, I won't be duplicating any work along the way. I'll make sure that it's all coordinated. That's one question. One answer. And then the other one, I think we were talking about where the water runoff and everything. I do know when the other projects were done in other locations, it was the responsibility of the city to try and make sure that the water ran wherever it could because potentially it was cutting across city property. Mm -hmm. So I do know that um, when, in certain circumstances, the city has paid to do that just to make sure that we didn't have a problem of water running over another person's property or whatever. We wanted to coordinate it all at one shot to make, make it the best, safe, and most um, uh, secure location for water drainage. Well, if there's nothing further, uh, we have a motion on the floor made by Gearbaugh, seconded by Roth, uh, to acknowledge receipt of the August 14th, 2015 memo from City Manager Campbell. Um, if there is nothing further, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. We're just voting on acknowledging receipt, Mr. Roth. I just want to make sure you're clear on that. Now on the project itself. That's fine. Okay. Um, so. Let me ask for that vote again. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries. Um, the subsequent motion will be a motion to approve or not to approve the Merchant Park improvements as presented. Move to approve. Thank you, Mr. Har. Is there a second? I'll second for discussion. Mr. Har, do you want to begin? Um, yes. I, I, um, we have uh, spent a lot of time discussing this project um, and it's worth continuing to discuss if there are uh, unresolved issues. I'm um, satisfied that we have a good plan in front of us that corrects some serious problems, including the drainage problem. Um, and I believe that uh, the project does improve the Merchant Park area to the benefit of all of the business owners in the area. I also think that it's important to say that we're also improving with this project. We see some improvements to the city's infrastructure, the parking lot, that are important um, and very worth doing. Uh, one of those um, is making the sidewalk um, along the parking lot, between the parking lot and the Oxygen Plus building um, accessible, taking out those steps and those barriers, and also um, separating out the trash and uh, grease collection points from other functions that really don't belong with them um, and making the parking lot more user friendly for parkers. So I will support the, um, I will be voting in favor of this project. Very good. Additional comments? Mr. Gearbaugh, please. Um, I'm fine with the way it is presented at this way, except for that one aspect of putting into that other parking space. That's the only other change that I would make a, as a condition to this motion. Um, I think we need to look at whatever we can do to make that best. Because part of the thing with doing this and why we were doing a relocation was we were going to have the benefit of adding a parking space. And so not only are we going to be improving and potentially putting a barrier-free um, handicap space there, but also would like to see that additional space there if it can fit where there's that green space up to the north. Well, Mr. Councilmember Gearbrow, the chair is happy to work with you on an addendum to this motion. I don't know how the mover feels, but that would be certainly something that I would be amenable to including. Yes, that would be acceptable to me. So how would you like to, to word your amendment? So that, just to be clear, the motion currently reads to approve the Merchant Park, improvement, Mer Merchant Park improvements as presented. support it that way but with a motion that as presented with the exception of potential additional parking space being added at the north uh, what is that northwest area we can just say northwest I think that's clear you want to read that back, Clerk Royal? I have to approve the Merchant Park improvements as presented with the exception of a potential parking space being added at Northwest Corner. In the Northwest Corner. In the Northwest Corner. That's good. Mr. Gearbrow, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, and just one other statement. Um, the concern making sure that we have known that all the individuals around here have understood that this has been being developed, namely the actual 
property owners all here, I think I know Dan is aware of it. Oxygen Plus probably is aware of it, I believe, because of the location of that air conditioning unit. Todd? The, Mr. Campbell? Uh, we have not addressed it as of such, but we will be. Okay. But are they aware of that we've been doing this redesign? Uh, we did not contact them directly, but we again, we will follow up. That would be the other one um, condition to make sure that all the property owners are well aware of the final plan. Do you want to include Prior that in your friendly yes. amendment? Prior okay. to proceeding. Uh, okay, I'm working. Okay. And just to be clear, <laughs> Ms. Tahar is the mover of the motion. You were comfortable at least with Mr. Gearbaugh's initial language regarding the parking spot. Yes, that's are, correct. Are you also comfortable with some additional language once we determine the exact, the exact verbiage about um, making sure that all adjacent property owners are, are communicated with? Yes. Okay. As am I the second. So we'll let the clerk... Okay. Do her magic here and then read it back to you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Yeah, I appreciate these changes, but having faced this stuff in the past, I want to make sure that we have the best sure. uh, project coming out of this. You got to read the full motion then? Yes. To approve the merchant park improvement with the exception of a potential parking space being added in the northwest corner and that all adjacent business owners are notified. Correct. Yep. I'd, I'd like to have some clarification, please. Just one quick question. I'll, I'll turn it over to you in just one second, Mr. Roth. So, we're, Ms. Tahar, you're, you're clear on that. You accept that as a friendly amendment? Yes, I do. And I, as the second, I accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay? Mr. Roth, please. As this, actually, item for our agenda, far as it says, Merchant Park Improvements as presented, we presented a list of cost items. If we approve this, are we approving the payment for these cost items or just the concept? Are we voting on far as the payment or just the concept? Well, this is the, this is the, uh, the cost. right, the cost estimate and it will be determined by when we um, put out an RFP to get bids and so, you know, again, hopefully we're, we're right on target. Okay, oh, I, I, but, be, be clear on that. but yes, and the, the uh, any uh, when we do bids, they will have to come back and be approved by, uh, be accepted by city council. So we are actually giving the green light for spending up about a hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars for this project. Is that correct? I'm not sure. A hundred and it's a hundred and thirteen thousand. Well, hundred. I, I got. I pulled the wrong sheet. So say let's say a hundred and fourteen thousand since it's been reduced. Well, is that correct? Well, what you're I saying. I just want to be sure that I know what I'm voting on, Understood. and what we're voting on, and the public knows what we're voting on. The concept, design concept, or the whole package, as far as okaying the future expenditures of that amount of money. You are approving the proposed um, uh, site, uh, the, the 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 proposed imp physical improvements uh, as presented. As I said, the, the actual, you will have an opportunity to approve, consider and approve or not approve uh, bids. Uh, so the bids may be less, they may be more, they may be right on target. And we'll have to, we have to wait to see. Uh, our hope is that they're going to be close, um, but we will we'll wait and see. And then again, we'll bring those to City Council for consideration. At that point, City Council could, could say, you know what, we, we don't want to approve these costs. And so then at that point, we may have to go back to the drawing board and, 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 and um, make some further uh, changes to the uh, proposed improvements to uh, reduce the cost. Okay, so we're, we are making a commitment for an expenditure pending upon what the bids are coming in. And we're doing this without having all of our questions answered. I think that's kind of a little premature for us to do some stuff along those lines. I would have felt comfortable that I will, instead of I will contact the property owners, we have done such, and they are on board, they understand what's happening. And I kind of think that we owe that instead of getting slapped in the face with it, and it's customary that any improvements being done far as with personal property within the city, that you have the responsibility of informing before you go ahead and get the okay to do something as far as adjacent property owners, so they have a chance to do something along with that. Also, the, when we move the dumpster to the other end of the parking lot, we are losing some parking spaces. So 
the net gain of parking space or whatever it is may be a wash or even a loss as far as the number of parking spaces in that particular lot. Safety, if it's been taken care of, we can get by with it. And so safety concerns, I still feel that there's a lot of unfinished things done that need to be done before we make a, such a financial commitment. And I also a question far as, since there was an amendment made, do we vote on the amendments or not vote on the amendments? Or is it lock, stock, and barrel, we vote for the entire first proposal and then the amendments all at one time? I can clarify some of that for you, Councilmember Roth. Let me, let me first begin, because I want to make sure we're very clear on this. And I'll, I'll preface by saying I understand your position, although we have some disagreement, I, I respect it. I want to be very clear that, again, what, we're, what the motion is, is empowering us to do is to improve the, to approve the uh, Merchant Park improvements as presented with the uh, addendum that Mr. Gearball offered and the, the, the estimate that was provided by our consultant from URS. I want to be very clear, there is, not a, there is no commitment or no requirement, regardless of how you vote tonight, that you have to vote on independent, independent expenditures and proposals when they're subsequently presented to council. I want to be very clear on that. The amendment that Mr. Gearbaugh offered was accepted as friendly by both the mover and seconder of the initial motion. So that has been included in the, the motion that we'll be voting on. So we're not voting separately on the amendment it is already included in the motion. We clear on that? Yes, thank you. Thank you, okay. Um, additional comments or questions? No, okay. Since we... You're fine that that's correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, it indeed it is correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you wanna reread the, the amended motion? We have to approve the merchant park improvement with the exception of a potential parking space being added in the northwest corner and that all adjacent business owners are notified. That's correct, right, Mr. Gearbaugh? And that you were comfortable adding that, correct, Ms. Tahar? Yes, that's as correct. As was I as the second. Is there any additional discussion regarding the motion? No? Okay. Then all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. 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 So show of hands, just so I'm clear. All those in favor, okay, and then the nays, hands up, okay. So the ayes have it and the motion carries. We move on to new business, item 15-159, community event Oktoberfest changes. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the application for community events from Celine Main Street and to approve or not to approve the changes to the community event Oktoberfest and to waive or not waive the additional fees. Is there a motion? Uh, move to approve and waive. Can we acknowledge receipt as well, Mr. Gearbaugh? Sorry, yep. That Thank is. you. No, no big deal. It's been properly moved by Gearbaugh to acknowledge receipt, to approve, and to waive. Is there a second? Second. second. Seconded by Councilwoman Seibel Koenig. Um, who cares to comment on this? Is there someone from Main Street who can comment? Riley, Rebecca, we welcome you to the podium tonight. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for allowing me to be here, Mayor Marl and City Council. I'm Rebecca Schneider, most of you know me. I am the co-chair of Oktoberfest and have been with this event since its inception with the um, Downtown Merchants Association. Riley um, completed our application, I believe it's before you, and as always I like to point out what's new this year with Oktoberfest. We've added two events related to animals, the first, we've added our wiener dog races. This is something we've always wanted to bring to the event. They will be on Saturday. The other thing we added on Saturday as part of Kinder Plots, which is our free area for kids' activities, is the Nelson's Wildlife Safari. And they bring down a whole host of exotic animals that the kids can interact with. And um, we've heard rave reviews. They've, uh, they've been featured at company picnics and other family festivals in the area so they come highly recommended. We had a request last year to get more German music, so we did that on Saturday. We have pretty much an all German, all the time until the evening um, performance lined up. We um, are bringing Linda Lee from Frankenmuth down to perform for us in the afternoon. So we added, it's hard to score German entertainment that time of year, believe it or not, there's not a lot of it. On um, 
Some of the structural infrastructure things we changed this year, we want to close South Ann Arbor Street on Friday night. We never close a street easily, easily, but we want to do that so that we can move our information booth outside. We also feel it will be safer. There's a lot of traffic. There were a lot of people standing on the sidewalk waiting to get into our event. So this way we put our information and ticket sales out on the street and there's not as big of a bottleneck to get into the event and there's just more safety for all the people that come down. Um, the other thing we want to do is, during the event is close the alley. Um, the leather bucket alley presented some problems for us last year and especially presented problems for downtown business owners who have access. Um, we ran short of potties on Friday night and um, people were utilizing the alley. So we want to close the alley. It also helps secure our perimeter, um, for, which is important with our liquor license. And the, the, one of the final things we did is we, we are going to put our portage johns in a different location this year. We want to move them farther from the businesses because we don't want anything to happen like happened last year. We've also increased them. We last year noticed that we did not have enough on Friday night, so we ordered twice as many for Saturday. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. We appreciate you being here. Who has uh, questions for the applicant? Mr. Gearbaugh. Just quick, when you indicate closing the alley, um, the leather bucket alley, mm -hmm. does that include all the businesses that would be using it? No, it just includes the, they will have to kind of, if they're going to get deliveries, they're going to have to, their deliveries will still get through, okay. but they may want to coordinate them so that they're earlier or later. They still do that because the parking lot is closed anyway but people can still get deliveries down the alley. We just don't want people running up and down the alley late at night or um, when they're drinking beer. So it'd be after a certain time. I'm, I'm thinking if Mangiamo's wanted mm -hmm. to continue having people seat, sit yep. up there or the other ones, they still can do that until a certain point in time? Or are you asking the city to close it for the whole night? That's the only question I'm trying to clarify. You know, I, don't, I had not thought about that aspect of it. Um, I think if because Mangiamo would have access out their back door that their patrons could still come in and go out there and leave through the front of Mangiamo's. Okay. I believe our lease allows us to, so many events to close it for something. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify, I just remembered that, so, yep. okay. I think that's fine. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Any additional questions for our applicant? No? Appreciate your time. I, I, all I have to say is um, you've got some great additions to this event, Rebecca, I know mm -hmm. that you and Slane Main Street recruit, solicit, solicit, excuse me, a number of volunteers to help with this event. We appreciate that. I think it's going to be pretty tough to, um, to duplicate the success of, uh, of 2014 yes. because that was, that was pretty amazing. But this is a really iconic uh, Celine event, and I think we're all looking forward to it. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mayor Mile. Any subsequent discussion, my friends? No, that's been properly moved by Gearbaugh, seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig to acknowledge receipt, to approve, and to waive. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 15-153. This, this is code review task force proposed ordinance amendments. Um, this was a motion to acknowledge receipt of the code and ordinance review task force proposed ordinance amendments and to approve or not to approve the second reading and to adopt or not to adopt the following amended ordinances. One, the trimming and removal of trees. Two, right of way construction permits. Three, powers and duties of board of review. Four, repair and construction of city sidewalks. And five, mailboxes. Move, Is there a motion? Move to acknowledge your receipt to approve and to adopt. Thank you, Councilwoman Tahar. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Gearbaugh. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Hard, do you care to comment as a as an active and participating member of the Code Review Task Force? Um, well, we've had a couple of several opportunities for Council to read and review these, as well as uh, the public to read and review them as part of the um, the meeting packet. Uh, I will say that the um, the the approach the committee took was to simplify as much as possible. Um, existing codes for the benefit of uh, both city staff and for the public for their understanding um, and also to um, eliminate things that had to be updated every time the state for example tr changed the name of an organization um, so they were 
the, the intent was to update and to streamline and to, to make more understandable. Um, and I, I believe we accomplished that, um, at least in some of the cases. Very good. Thank you. Any additional comments? Mr. Gearbox, Just please. a clarification for myself. I know we had first read last week, and then now we have second read and approval tonight. What's the requirement? Just from my own perspective, between a first read and a second read, is there a time span required or not? Okay. I saw it was printed in the Ann Arbor News also, so I was just curious myself. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Anything further? Well, let me just say um, the, the Code and Ordinance Task Force has done uh, amazing work with the assistance of staff and legal counsel. I want to again thank them, thank all the individuals who serve on that group for their service. Um, the the first set of recommended changes I think were positive additions. I think the second set of, of proposed changes are, are appropriate and worthwhile um, and I enthusiastically endorse the motion and the adoption of these changes. Uh, and again, thank you to those who have, have worked so hard to, uh, to make this happen. If there's nothing further, it's been properly moved by Tahar, seconded by Gearbaugh to acknowledge receipt, to approve, and to adopt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. Move on to new business item 15-160. This is MML annual liability and property insurance pool removal. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the August 12th, 2015 memo from City Manager Campbell and to approve or not to approve the annual renewal premium with the pool for the time period of September 1st, 2015 through August 31st, 2016 in an amount not to exceed $128,233. Move to acknowledge receipt and to approve. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig. I know we have a guest from MML's liability pool, but I guess at this time I would turn it over to you, Mr. Campbell, for, for comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, as you mentioned, uh, Judy thompson Terosian, our representative from uh, Meadowbrook from the uh, MML liability and property pool that uh, the city's been part of since early 2000. Um, and um, she certainly can answer any, any questions that any of you may have. As you will see, there is a, a slight increase uh, for the first time, I think, in, in several years, 3% uh, uh, increase, um, which equivalents to um, almost $3,800. Um, and then, this, again, the city would be receiving, upon renewal, um, another dividend uh, check of $17,000 from the pool um, as well. So, um, again, we've been very pleased with... with um, MML's um, uh, policies and their coverage and th their uh, expertise, their helpfulness that, that, we've, that we utilize throughout the year. Um, and so we would certainly encourage uh, the approval of, of, uh, the, of this renewal. Very good. Judy, we appreciate you being here. It's always good to see you. Do you want to make any comment at this time? I, I, I can or I don't have to. If, if you'd like me to, I can make a free presentation. It's up to you. Sure. We would welcome that. Hey, we should listen. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity to speak to council this evening. Um, the city has been a member of the MML liability and property pool since September 1, uh, 2003. And Todd had asked me to explain the reasons for the slight increase. Uh, we rate based on various factors, such as payroll, which went up slightly this year, property values when that went up basically because we in increased your property values for replacement cost purposes. And you had uh, one less police officer this year, so that brought the premium factor down slightly. You had two additional vehicles, which brought it up slightly. So, And then we had a slight premium increase on the property side because the 2014 year we had significant property claims to the tune for the whole pool, not, not for the city of Saline, but for the entire pool of about $8 million. So we have a long-standing relationship with our property reinsurer, and they gave us a, a very slight increase because of our long-term relationship. So the net result was about a 3% increase, which all members are seeing. Uh, and that's, that's for all the factors, all your rating factors. The uh, city, as Todd explained, will receive the 2015 post-renewal dividend of $17,000. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Very good. Thank you, Judy. Are there any questions for our guest? That's pretty easy. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
a wonderful program, and we appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you for being a member. I hope, I hope you will remain one. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Um, any subsequent discussion on this motion? No, that it's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Councilwoman Seibel Koenig to approve or to acknowledge receipt and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you again, Judy. Have a good evening. We move on to new business item 15 161. This is CARE, a CARES grant request. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the August 11th, 2015 memo from Parks and Rec Director Scruggs and to approve or not to approve the request to apply for a CARES grant to cover the cost of play equipment for Brecken Park in the estimated amount of $10,000. Is there a motion? Make the motion to acknowledge and to approve. Thank you, Councilmember Roth. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. Director Scruggs, do you care to make a comment this evening? Well, um, first of all, I'd like to thank Donovan and his family for being here to support this tonight. Um, we are, uh, with, with Donovan's leadership, we've been um, kind of attacking this, this project, trying to um, gain momentum and get some funding, and CARES is an opportunity to get a um, maximum of $10,000. They, they have it capped out so that um, your, your maximum request is 10,000. So at least that would give us uh, a leg up to start doing some additional fundraising and, and seeking out other grant opportunities and things like that. So uh, we just request your permission to apply for the grant. Very good. Is there any questions for Director Scruggs? Ms. Tahar. Oh, yes, thank you. Is there any requirement from CARES that the funds be expended within a certain amount of time or can, are we allowed to set it aside until the full amount has been raised? On occasion, they do give us some some leniency. Um, I think this is the type of project that it's it's a community type of a project, and I I don't want to speak for the CARES board or anything, but they they would maybe give us some leniency. Okay, thank you. Other comments or questions, Ms. Dillon? So it would be a project that would not be started. It's not going to be piecemeal together. It's you're not going to start the playground until you've raised all of the money. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's, we wouldn't be able to, to do that. Okay. Any further? Well, let me just say, and, and Donovan and, and your folks, we, we appreciate you being here this evening and very impressed by your, your comments at the podium. That can be very intimidating. But I should share with my colleagues what I was even more impressed by was a letter that he sent me, what was it, about six months ago now? Yeah. yeah. I think it was a school assignment, if I'm not mistaken. But he was, he was, his eloquence far exceeds his age, and he talked about the importance of making improvements to Brecken Park, which of course are, are, are something that we're planning for, or that the, uh, the Parks Commission and our, our esteemed director have been planning for. We just need the funding to do that. So not only did he advocate for the improvements, but he went out and raised money on his own and raised a pretty substantial amount. What, what is the amount? Well, uh, before the meeting, we were at 1900 I believe we got $10 during the meeting. And I believe uh, we <laughs> there was a $25 donation today as well. Um, so we're hoping to, um, actually, Donovan has a, a plan to reach out to some other people and businesses and, and things like that. So we're working pretty closely together to, to try to generate as much interest as possible. The rates are going. You could be a professional fundraiser someday. It's very impressive. So, Will, we thank you for your, your, your leadership on this issue. I think we all owe him a round of applause. That's pretty, pretty impressive. <laughs> and I know his parents are really proud, and we appreciate you being here tonight. So, um, unless any, so, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gearbaugh, please. Carla, it's anyone in the audience wants to donate, who should they send checks to, or how are you? That's a, a really great question. Um, if anyone is interested in donating, um, we do have an account set up through the city. So um, a, a check uh, or money could be accepted here at City Hall. I'd be happy to, to go pick up a check if you'd like. <laughs> but the money is, is in an account. And I do believe, do you still have your GoFundMe? There, there is a, an online GoFundMe page as well. Um, and if you could remind me of the, the link is on the page that Ashley gave you. Okay. Yeah. There's... You know, we'll, we'll make copies of that page and make sure everyone on council gets one and they can hopefully do their part to help promote that, that GoFundMe page. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Anything further? 
Know that it's been properly moved by Roth, seconded by Dillon to acknowledge receipt and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you again. Appreciate it. We move on to new business item 15-162. This is Natrium ven Ventilation Project. Did I pronounce that correctly? Natatorium. Natatorium. Excuse me. Um, this will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the August 12, 2015 memo from Parks and Rec Director Scruggs and to approve or not to approve the award, the award of the Natrium contract to Boone and Dar in the amount of $132,000. Is there a motion? Move to acknowledge receipt and to approve. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaz. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Tarr. Director Scruggs, do you care to make comment on this issue? <clears throat> I outlined in my memo kind of the, the whole process of what, what we've been um, doing. But um, just as a summary, uh, January of 2014, uh, we did a natatorium ventilation study. Um, process results um, did that for us and discovered that there was um, a lack, I guess, a lack of, of ventilation going towards the west end of the natatorium. The natatorium being that, that entire aquatic center. So the lap pool, the small pool, the, um, the hot tub area, the cabana, the, the family locker rooms. Anything that's in that area is called the natatorium. And um, so there's several recommendations that came from this study. And, um, and we, we realized that, uh, that we needed to go ahead and have uh, process results, uh, City Council, you approved them to do uh, the, the, the um, what do you call it, the uh, engineering drawings to create the solution for, for this ventilation problem. And um, we estimated that this project would cost about $100,000 and uh, the the bids came in a little bit higher than, than what we anticipated. Um, we did spend $14,000 last fiscal year for the engineering of that project. So we did carry over um, 84,000 for this fiscal year. And when we did the competitive bids, uh, we received two bids. One was from Boone and Dar, and the other one was from J.W. O'Neill. I hope I said that correctly, sorry. W.J. O'Neill, sorry. And um, Boone and Dar was the lower bid. Um, both companies, I did reference checks, and, and uh, I had great, great um, feedback for both companies. Um, but obviously, the one that was lower would do, you know, why spend more money on that? So um, this is where we're at right now. We do have, um, it's, it's a little bit more than what we anticipated, but we do have a fund balance from last year that we could potentially tap into to pay for this project. Very thorough report. Thank you, Mr. Scruggs. Um, questions or comments? Mr. Gearbus, since you move the motion, please. Yeah, was there any distinct area from what we had from the estimated cost and what we actually got for the final bid? Was where, where was it focused on the additional increase? Is there anything in particular? I, you know what I, I think it is, is the industry right now is is booming and costs are driven up. Um, that that's our only guess. And there there is some cement work that's going to be like the the benches are going to be cement, and with uh, ventilation um, grills at the bottom. So cement at this time is is fairly expensive. Um, the reason why I was asking just to determine if we had something specific. I know this has been an issue with the building and. At this point in time, we've got to get it fixed. Uh, the, the ventilation and so forth, and if you've explained it to all of us, has been damaging the building. It's not effective for any of our electronic equipment. And it's understanding that I think some of this probably was the result of some other previous re reworks or redo that weren't done properly or may not have been anticipated. So at this point, I know we're sinking some more money into it, but we've got a building and we've got to keep it running. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Additional comments or questions? Well, let me just echo what, what Council Member Gearbaugh said. Obviously, you were all aware of this issue because we had a work meeting on this subject, Ms. Scruggs, remind me, probably six months ago now. Um, it could have even been better. It was uh, last January, I last believe. January, okay. 2014. 2014, okay. 
Um, so it's, it's been a while, um, but needless to say, this, this cannot continue, and it has an adverse impact on the experience our customers have when they utilize the pool or the hot tub, which I would guess is probably the most um, appreciated, the most well used of all of the amenities we have at our recreation complex, which is really a, a community resource and a gem and something we should be proud of, and evidently something that we've invested a significant amount of time and energy in in recent years, trying to make it more viable, more attractive to, to the community. So I think, well, you never like to spend money, um, especially not money in, in the amount that's enumerated in the motion, but I think it's, it's appropriate and prudent, and like Mr. Gearboss said, it absolutely needs to be fixed. And uh, so I appreciate your, your work and your leadership on this issue. Thank you. Is there anything further? No, then it's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Tahar, to acknowledge receipt and to approve. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to our final new business item of the evening. Um, new business item 15-163, this is Firework Safety Act Resolution. Um, this was a discussion item at last week's uh, meeting. This will be a motion to approve and adopt or not to adopt the resolution as submitted in support of repealing or substantially amending Public Act 256 of 2011, the Michigan Firework Safety Act. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Councilwoman Cybokanig. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Gearbaugh. Discussion. Obviously, this was discussed last week. I appreciate my colleagues' um, consideration. And assuming this passes this evening, Ms. Royal, or, or Clerk Royal, excuse me, will draft a letter and send copies to our state representative, state senator, and the governor's office. Correct? Very good. Any subsequent discussion? Mr. Gearbaugh, please. Just uh, from part of this, I know that there's concerns about the ability to use fireworks and everything, but it's really this bigger issue of local ordinance and local control, which the current legislation continues to try to take away from us. So I think whatever we can do to encourage our own ability to govern ourselves is one of the things that we need to do. Right. Uh, and I would add to that, and I think I've mentioned this in the past, I, one, of the, 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 one of the many deficiencies in the statute is that it fails to properly acknowledge the distinction between rural areas where people who own 10, 20, 30 acres discharge commercial grade fireworks versus areas like Saline where you have very densely populated areas and the impact that has not only on neighborhood uh, morale, um, but also how it violates, uh, well, not violates, but how it has an impact on, on noise and the peace of the community. Um, and needless to say, it's also a public safety issue. So I think it's important that we be advocates on, on this issue and hopefully we'll get some positive feedback from our elected officials. If there's nothing further, we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Councilwoman Seibel Koenig, seconded by Gearbach, to approve and to adopt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. I zap it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to discussion items. First up is Commission, Committee, and Task Force reports from Council members. We probably won't have too many since we just met last week. Are there any Commission, Committee, or Task Force reports? No? How about reports or other announcements? Well, I've got a couple. I've got... You, got, you go ahead, Mr. Roth, please. Right. I, I want to mention that this Saturday, the, the 29th, or excuse me, it's going to be the 29th of this month to the September 10th, we're going to have 33 visitors from our sister city, Lindenburg, Germany. Their Burgermeister mayor, which is their mayor, will be here in a, visiting Sleen for his first time, so it would be great. There are some things that the general public can enjoy, join in. The first one is going to be on Sunday, the 30th, here at City Hall, 2 o'clock. But prior to that, it's going to be some light refreshments served, so it's going to be the welcoming ceremonies. So we'll have some brief welcoming to our, get, our visitors. So those who have had any contact with the people from Germany in the past are welcome to come and partake in that. And that evening, same day, Sunday, we'll have desserts at the American Legion starting at 7 o'clock. Public's welcome there. We'll have the Sleen Fiddlers doing a short little performing for them. They were over there a few years ago and hosted by the city of Lindenburg and give, gave several concerts. So 
the people from visitors here are anxious to see and reconnect with the Selene Fiddlers at this point in time. So we welcome the people to come in and meet the Germans from there and become an active part of our sister city relationships with Lindenburg, Germany. Then on September 9th, there's a farewell dinner. It's going to be held at Magiamos, the upstairs part of it. The cost for that dinner would be $30, and people are welcome to do that. It, I would like to have some reservations for it. You can make reservations by contacting me, and you can pay at the door. My phone number is 734-429-4063, and that will be as far as the evening before the that our visitors depart to go back home. So it's quite an event. We've had some excellent exchanges between the two cities. This is the time they're coming over here. We're the, we have a separate organization that helps, that finances the visitors, and that's our Selene Lindenberg Friendship Committee. And people can be members of that. We work very hard. Kind of we pay for, end up paying for the bus transportation before they're here, pay for most of their expenses. So it's a quite an endeavor. We are formed because the city cannot spend taxpayers' money on these visitors or host them like we'd like to host them. So that's the purpose of organization. So there's several good citizens in the community that work very hard and partake with it. And this is definitely open to everybody in this community to go along with it. And this particular group, committee partners with the GAP program, which involves the high school students between our two cities. We also have another fundraiser, which was planned before we knew their visit. They depart on the 10th. On the 11th, we have a dinner in partnership with the American Legion as a joint partnership program that we have with them as a fundraiser. So half the profits go to the Legion, the other half goes to us. And we do the, they prepare the food and we do the rest of the work for that. And that is that Friday evening. And the, we open the doors at 6.30, dinner's at 7, 7 o'clock. And we've got quite an extensive menu for that. They're going to have German sausages, black forest ham, a spatza bake, red cabbage, German hot German potato salad, vegetables, and dessert. So it's... They've done a fantastic job at the Legion for the past couple of years for us, and it is a completely <coughs> different kind of dinner than their sauerkraut dinner. So with, they do an excellent job for this, and it'll be a good, e good event for us. The Legion also has a raffle that they help, we help share the profits with us, and that's on a grill, so we encourage you to buy raffle tickets for that. So this event's open to the public, and again, make reservations for that. I'm the one that receives that stuff and you can pay for it at the door. It's 429-4063. And watch, we have some posters around and hope they have it on the American Legion billboard likewise. So this is a fundraiser that goes toward, we need lots of fundraisers <coughs> in order to pay the bill for hosting our visitors. Very good, Look, thank I got you. one more. Oh, yet. I'm sorry, no, please. The Slane Area Historical Society will be having the first educa educational program on September 13th, which is Sunday before our next council meeting. It's held at 2 o'clock at the Slane Library in the Brecken Room. And the pro the Robert Young will be making a presentation. He'll be have, showing some hands-on demonstrations and stuff for his early stone tools. So he'll be showing how to make arrowheads and other tools that the Indians used and people back in the Stone Ages would have used something like one of these lines. So it should be an interesting program. You might, if you'd gone to the Celtic Festival, you had a chance, he was there, but there's lots of other activities going on. He had a display set up, so that's the same individual. Some of those, you may have met him. So you can have a chance to sit down and hear him make his presentations about how the tools were used and that type of stuff. This goes, kind of goes back as far as the thinking about our Salt Spring Parks that we have in our history where the Indians, our six trails came together here, so we had lots of Indian activity along here using these types of tools and flints and so on. So that's why we have them for the program. And Robert Young has been very active in doing the, some of the excavation work as far as in Salt Springs Park. 
Very good. Thank you, Councilmember Roth. Other uh, reports or announcements? I just have a couple, and Mr. Councilmember Roth took one of mine, which is the uh, open house on Sunday the 30th for our Lindenburg guests. Um, but I also wanted to follow up on an email that you should have all received from Heather Kellstrom, the Director of Information Technology from Selene Area Schools. But I also got a request this weekend from Cheryl Haft on behalf of the Selene Area Historic Preservation Foundation inviting you all to the traditional ice cream social held this um, Sunday at the Weber Bliss Schoolhouse. And I want to again reference the email you should have all received from Heather Kellstrom inviting you all to participate in, I believe, not only a croquet challenge, but I'll check your email if you didn't, if you don't recall seeing this. She sent it probably about a week and a half ago, Ms. Seibel Um They always want city council to compete with the school board and school officials in a croquet, and I believe the, the term is cornhole, where you throw the bean bag. Um, those two, uh, they have two little competitions to generate some publicity and, and, and a buzz at the event. So I will be at the event probably very briefly at the beginning, but unable to stay for those two activities. But if your schedules permit this Sunday afternoon, I would strongly encourage you at least to attend the events and hopefully participate in, in a friendly challenge between the city and uh, the school district. The other thing I want to make note of is instead of a concert this Thursday um, in downtown Saline, it's the school's pep rally which begins at 7 p.m. in downtown Saline on Ann Arbor Street between Michigan Ave and, uh, and Henry. And then also Tuesday, September the 1st at 6.30 is the Fair Parade, uh, a new uh, incarnation of the Fair Parade starting at Henny Field and going to um, Mill Pond Park. So I just want to make you aware of that. If there are no additional reports or announcements, um, let's move on to the sidewalk letter. If you recall, we discussed this um, to some extent, although I think pretty thoroughly, at our last meeting. Mr. Campbell has a revised draft, which you should have all received in your packets on Friday. Do you have any comments about your revised draft? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, just that um, it was requested to kind of soften a little bit and also to add some of the, what we're doing currently with the, the grinding of the sidewalk and such. What suggestions do you have, Ms. Sabokini? It, um, I uh, appreciate the amount of information that's trying to be conveyed. It is too wordy. It's just too long to be effective if it, this is intended to go to residents. I, as a, I, I'm just afraid it's too long to be um, absorbed properly or for the message to be conveyed okay. Uh, effectively. Okay. How does the rest of council feel about that? Agree? agree? Mr. Howard, you agree? Yes. Mr. Roth, do you agree? Yes. Mr. Gearbaugh? Yes. Okay. Can you take a third stab at it? <laughs> Sorry. Can I, well, <laughs> just a suggestion, you have a lot of information here which I think is, um, that refers to the ordinance and so forth. Could that be put on a separate page and mm -hmm. just have a cover sheet that really attacks the key points? Sure, we can do that. And that was, yeah, I'm sorry, that was the other item to, to reference the, the uh, code as well. So, but uh, we, can, we can certainly um, uh, take another shot at it. So just to be clear, because I know all of us, myself included, want to move expeditiously on this, what is your preference? Would you prefer to have this as a discussion item again at the next meeting, or can Mr. Campbell make a revision to his draft, attach it maybe to a weekly communique, um, and get feedback from you all uh, that way? What's your preference? That's fine. That's, that's, that's fine with me. Okay. Okay, Mr. Harlow, yes. that's fine with yes. you. Mr. Roth, fine. fine. Okay, Ms. Dillon. Yes, that's fine. Obviously, if he gets bombarded with with um, suggestions, we may have to bring it back to another meeting. But um, if the consensus is is overwhelming and, and emphatic that um, his revised draft looks good, then uh, we'll assume you can run with it. Um, and obviously, I know you'll work with with staff, in particular DPW, to develop a list and then get this out post haste. Okay, very good. Um, and then do you want to comment, Mr. Campbell, at all on the strategic plan? I know it says on the agenda, no update, but if you could make any comment, we would, we would welcome that. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you, as you may recall, um, the, uh, the charge is to, to try and discuss at least a little bit um, of the, uh, at least once a month. Uh, so one of the two monthly meeting or bi-monthly meetings of, at City Council uh, is, is uh, typically what 
or what we've done at city staff, our weekly staff meeting, is that we go through and uh, everybody that has the responsibility for, for a part of that uh, plan, if they've made any progress, um, we'll provide an update. And um, since the last time, since uh, a couple weeks ago, there hasn't been um, any really significant change to report, uh, but we do continue to, to work towards addressing um, uh, those matters. Matter of fact, as of today, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, we had a, the first uh, meeting for um, working on uh, one of the objectives is to uh, improve the connectivity between Henny Field and the downtown and Depot Museum and bring those together. And so we, we kicked off that group meeting today. So um, anyway, so that's kind of where we're at. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Are there any questions for our city manager regarding our strategic plan? No. And again, we'll be receiving periodic and probably more thorough updates uh, in the future and when it's appropriate that uh, that uh, those be given. Um, if there's nothing further under the discussion portion of the agenda this evening, we move on to public comments. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Mary Hess, I had hoped to make uh, my comments that I made at the work meeting at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, but apparently after the vote, it might be a moot point. I would like to say that uh, we had a problem with Bucket Alley when the city did not have the courtesy to address the people that had finally moved into Benito's. And I think it definitely was in consideration not to include Oxygen Plus in this plan or even to have the courtesy to show them what's going to be done. I can't believe that, again, as the alley was a big problem, the contract was already made, and then she said, what about me? The other thing you're talking about, wooden, uh, wood being used for the, uh, to keep the storage of trash. I think they had a wooden one behind uh, uh, Domino's. They had a wooden one over by Benny's and it fell apart. Didn't take 20 years. It took about five. I think it's sad when sometimes we say, oh, it's been 20 years since we did that. But all of a sudden we do it again. I hope it has been profitable for some of the people on council. Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Are there additional public comments? Please. I'm Joan Roth. Uh, I live on Anwood Court. And I first want to appreciate the, the work and the, the follow-up discussions um, following a letter that I sent way back in June and then appeared, I think, on June 15 regarding the Merchant Park um, renovation because I, I, I was blown away by a quarter of a million dollars for a renovation uh, for the space that the city doesn't own. But I did have some questions came up as there was discussion in the work session and then when you were discussing the, the agenda item. Um, who is going to pay for the electrical that apparently is more involved, and I, I don't understand at all. And will the landlord still pay that maximum of $20,000 toward the renovation project? And um, who is going to pay for the air conditioning unit that apparently has to be relocated? So those are some questions that post-discussion came up in my mind. So. But I thank you again. Um, I think the, the whittling down of the cost of this Merchant Park renovation has made a significant difference. So it can be done, I assume. And um, hopefully we just won't go ahead quickly and then not have all these questions that have been uh, coming up with the discussion on the agenda tonight re with regard to the, the irrigation and the, some of the other engineering questions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Ross. Additional public comments? Uh, 
Hello, my name is Jim Pruitt. Some of you may recognize me from an earlier time in a previous life. I'm uh, representing, representing the Sun Times News. It's a new print edition that's coming to Celine this week. Uh, it'll, it'll show up in your mailbox on Thursdays. It's free. So um, we're just uh, refilling the gap that was left when Washtenaw now uh, bit the dust and became part of history. And, uh, but our paper, my new paper is growing. I've been working for them since the end of April. And I used to cover Celine for some of you council members who don't know me, uh, but I see a lot of familiar faces here. And I just thought I'd introduce myself and just say we got you have a new newspaper coming into the area. So and uh, you know, I see uh, I'm getting to work with a lot of a lot of friends that I made before, and uh, including Martha and Tran. I'm getting to see Mary again, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. But I just thought I'd just formally introduce myself so you know who this large looming person is that makes Todd look small, wandering around the city council chambers. So. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Jim. Any additional public comments? Well, let me just say a few things. First of all, Jim, you, you're, you're a hard guy to miss, a hard guy to forget. Um, but we, uh, we welcome you back to Celine. We are very much appreciative that the, the Sun Times has decided to expand coverage to, to our community. We look forward to seeing that in print edition later this week, you said, Jim? First Thursday. First editions this Thursday. We'll look forward to that. And we welcome you. Um, Back to covering Celine, um, and obviously, I'm going to thank you in advance. Uh, we appreciate your, your service, same way we appreciate the service that uh, Martha provides and Tran and everyone who's covered us uh, in the recent years. So thank you very much. Um, to Mrs. Uh, Ross' comments, we will make sure that staff follows up and gets you some answers to the questions that you asked. We appreciate that, and of course, Mrs. Hess, we. We appreciate your, your comments and advocacy. I do want to be very clear, though, because it was enumerated in the motion um, per Mr. Gearbaugh's amendment that was received on friendly terms by the mover, Ms. Tahar, and myself, the seconder. Every adjacent business owner and property owner will be contacted uh, regarding this project. So your point is well taken. And since it was outlined in the motion, it, it will be done. Um, if there is nothing further to be brought before City Council this evening, I'll note that our schedule is similar to in, sep in September. It's very similar to what it was in August. We do have meetings back to back uh, in September, of course, because of Labor Day. So we'll be meeting on the 14th at 7.30 and then again on the 21st at 7.30. Uh, we already excused the absence of Mayor Pro Tem Road, so that is not necessary. So at this time, the chair would seek a motion to adjourn at 8.48 p.m. So moved. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Seibel Koenig. I'll get you next time, Ms. Dillon. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. This meeting is adjourned. Three.